All right, guys, we'll continue on with the second part of our bearing and navigation notes video. Really, that's just to complete that final example that I want to get to. So a couple important things that come from it. Um, I do want to talk about number two, the way we end up in our answer to this problem, which is over here, okay? If you were to just leave x equals y equals and z equals for uh, your pre-calculus teacher, we'd take off a point on an assessment, okay? Um, when you define a variable in a problem, but the problem, in theory, asks nothing to do with, like, solve for x, solve for y. You know, once we complete and solve for these variables, you get the numbers you want. we got to put them back into a format that answers the actual question that we have here. Okay? So just make note of that. Lastly, let's get on to number three. And we're going to talk about a plane um, going on a trip. And then wind as well, a wind speed. This would be the same... Uh, if it was a, a ship traveling on water and it encountering a current. Okay, so same type of, of process here. So it says a plane takes off from O'Hare Airport at a bearing of 51 degrees east of south at a speed of 400 miles an hour. Okay, so east of south, we're going to be going southeast. Alright, so we're going to be going in this direction. So I'm going to make O'Hare here. It's going to be O'Hare. All right, let's start by drawing our north-south line of orientation. We're going to open up 51 degrees to the east of south. Here's south, here's east. We're going to open up 51 degrees. And the first leg of our plane's trip is going to be in that general direction. Okay. It also states that it was traveling at a speed of 400 miles an hour. Let's keep that in the back of our mind. All right. So during its two-hour flight, it encounters a wind coming from a bearing of 61 degrees west of south at an average speed of 68 miles an hour. Ooh, that's a big wind. All right, guys. Now, we understand that the wind is hitting this plane at the entire duration of its trip, okay? But we don't need to worry about adjusting this until kind of like the end of its path. All right, so here's the deal. This would have been the path of the plane had there been no wind. Since there's wind coming from the southwest, here's the southwest, pushing the plane in that direction, the true path of the plane is actually the true end of the plane after two hours is not going to be here. It's actually going to be somewhere over here. And the way we do that is we do what we normally do. We basically create a triangle here. So here's how we deal with the wind. Now, I know the plane never made it to this point, but we're going to use this point. It would be the same as if the plane turned. Okay. Now, we're going to draw a north-south line of orientation. Very important. Wind, when measured, when you see wind on like a, a weather report and they say it's a northeast wind or a southwest wind, that means it's coming from the southwest, okay? So 61 degrees west of south. Here's south, here's to the west. Let's open up 61 degrees. That's not bad for a 61 degree angle. I think that's pretty good. But I'm going to draw this as a dashed line because this is not the direction that it's pushing the plane. It's coming from 61 degrees west of south, which means it's going to actually push this plane this way. Okay. It's coming from that direction, so it pushes the plane that way. Okay. All right, so we have our two legs of this trip, our, the path that the plane originally intended on, and where it actually ended up based on the wind. So this was the actual true path of the plane. All right. All right, cool. So the plane ends up here. Let's create our triangle. Okay. Now, 51 degrees here, alternate interior angles. That would lead to a 51 degree angle there. Parallel lines, alternate interior angles. We also have to remember vertical angles from geometry. The opposite um, sides of two lines intersecting would be congruent, which means this 61 degree angle, this would also be a 61 degree angle because those lines are vertical, sorry, those angles are vertical angles. 
making this a 112 degree angle. All right, it's said that we traveled at 400 miles per hour for two hours. That would be 800 miles. That was this leg of our triangle, 800 miles. The wind was uh, blowing at 68 miles per hour. So 68 miles per hour times two hours. That would be 136 miles. So it pushed it 136 miles in this direction. And the plane actually after two hours is right here this point. All right. Now if we want to kind of redraw this triangle, we certainly can. Sorry, the video got cut off there, but I took the liberty of redrawing that triangle without all the lines of orientation and some of the work that we did here. Okay. So we have that 112 degree angle, which was the sum of these two small parts of that angle. 800 miles, 136 miles, I called the distance that the plane was from O'Hare as X. Okay. So, uh, we have a side angle side case here. We know that we use law of cosines to, do, to deal with law, uh, side angle side cases. So, remember the angle and its opposite side, those are going to bookend our law of sine. So we get X squared equals, and our other two sides are going to be Kind of the middle portion here, 800 squared plus 136 squared minus 2 times 800 times 136, cosine of the angle that we're involved with. In our calculator, all we would need to do is type in the square root of this entire right side of the equation. We get 860.239 miles. Makes a lot of sense since this is the biggest angle of this triangle, this should be the biggest side length. Okay, so our answer here for that part of the question would be the plane is a distance of 860.239 miles from O'Hare. All right, now it's also asking the second question here is find the bearing the plane would need to take to make the return trip to O'Hare. And we're not going to adjust for the wind here. Okay. So if we were looking to make a return trip, if here's where we are now, and here's O'Hare, what we want to do is find this direction as a bearing. And if we're going to find this direction as a bearing, we're going to need a vertical line of orientation. All right. And what angle are we looking for? What should we make our variable here? Well, if this is our north-south line of orientation, then this is at a northwest angle here. So we really want to find this angle here. We're going to call that y degrees. If we can find that, our answer to this question would be this many degrees west of north would be what we would tell our plane to do to get back to O'Hare, go that direction. To solve for y degrees, we would need these other two angles. The first one down here, that should be easy. 61 degrees, alternate interior angles. This angle here, not as easy. We're actually going to need to use some trigonometry. We're going to call that z, okay? So that would be this angle inside of the triangle that we have down here. This is now 860.239 miles. All right. Let's use law of cosines one more time to solve for z. We're going to set it up here. Okay, z is an angle. So we're going to have cosine of z we're looking to solve for. On the other side of the equal sign, we're going to have its opposite side. That's going to be the 800 side. In the middle, we're going to have the other two, 860.239 squared plus 136 squared minus 2 times 860.239 times 136 cosine of z. We'll do all that algebra. We'll, we'll square all these. We'll add these together. We'll subtract it. Then we'll multiply these together and divide it. Then we'll do inverse cosine of that. And then we'll be able to solve for z. 
After doing all that algebra, squaring the 800, squaring these two, adding, subtracting, multiplying these together, dividing, we get cosine of z equals 0 0.506473, and then doing inverse cosine of 0 0.506473 in the calculator is going to give us 59.57 degrees. So that is 59.57, that is 59.57. These three angles make up a straight line. So y is going to equal 180 minus 120.57 degrees. So y is 59.43 degrees. And it would be that many degrees west of north. So the bearing to go back to O'Hare would be 59.43 degrees west of north. Okay. Probably the toughest part of any question you might get in a navigation word problem is if we were to ask you, for that kind of second bearing, all right? The bearing to return or the bearing to maybe go to this new point. What was the bear, the true bearing here, that path or coming back with this path? Okay, first you have to identify which angle is gonna give us that bearing, okay? It'd be this one because our bearing that we're, we're looking for, we really want to be between zero and 90 degrees, okay? To be honest, we could have written it as that a bearing of and subtracted this from 360, okay? Um, but we needed to find this angle here. How did we do that? We found this angle using geometry. We found this angle using law of cosines, which led us to this angle, again using geometry. Straight line, three angles would need to add up to 180. 